Hello and welcome to uh, another episode of Ministry Shift. And uh, we're going to be thinking in this episode about the subject of vision. Uh, many churches will have their own vision statements and uh, as part of the shaping for mission process, we've been thinking a little bit about creating a deanery vision and we may get to that in a moment. It's a well-used, perhaps overused word, but certainly one that needs thinking through. And to help me, Matthew Parker, the Episcopal Vicar for the Stafford Episcopal area, are four wonderful panel guests. And I'm going to introduce those to you. First of all, uh, Deb, Deborah uh, Walton, say a little bit about yourself and um, your ministerial context. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really lovely to see you. Um, I'm <clears throat> part time vicar of um, three. Uh, rural parishes in North Shropshire and I'm also um, part-time school chaplain in two community high schools also in North Shropshire. Thank you and Lindsay. Hello I'm Lindsay I work for the diocese and at the moment I'm mostly focusing on the shaping for mission work. And an old hand ministry shift Jim. Hello I'm Jim Trude I'm the rector at St Matthew's Church in Walsall uh, a town centre and civic church. Thank you. And finally, Andrew, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Andrew and I'm the team rector of the North Potteries team ministry in Stoke-on-Trent, looking after three churches, as I say, at the top end of Stoke, just before we go out towards Leek for the wild. Thank you. Well, welcome um, to our panellists and, and to our viewers. Um, I wonder if we might just start with uh, thinking a little bit about what we mean by vision. It's often accompanied by other set of words, such as, for example, strategy. Um, they're, I assume, two different things, but I'm happy to be corrected. Jim, would you make a distinction between vision and strategy? And if so, how, how would you frame that? Uh, I think I would make a, a distinction. I would say um, the strategy is what allows us to pursue our vision or God's vision. Uh, for me, it, it's always very much a case of, God gave us a brain and he expects us to use it. But at the same time, God also communicates his plans to us in a variety of different ways. And, and vision, if you like, is a combination of both. Uh, using our brains and talents and gifts to fulfill God's plans uh, wherever we might be located. And in all of this, prayer is vital. Uh, and we need to also remember that vision takes time. It can't be rushed. Lindsay, um... So a distinction there between strategy and vision uh, made by Jim. Um, I mean, how, how would you see the difference between the two, um, uh, between strategy and, and vision? I think as Jim was speaking then, I thought I agree exactly with that, but I'd have said it really differently. Um, I think vision is how we know we're not there yet. Um, so God gives us a vision of the kingdom of God, not because we see it all around us already manifest, but because we see signs of it that are enough to have a vision of what that could be like and what we're moving towards. And I think strategy is the steps to move towards the vision. Um, and I, I think if we don't have vision, if we don't put some energy into saying what is God's vision for, us for God's world for our communities we don't know what we're taking steps towards um, so for me that focus on vision is, is hugely important it's uh, the words vision and strategy and similar kind of words can feel to some people in church circles a little bit managerial perhaps occasionally that a, a lot of companies now have mission and vision statements and, and so on uh, Deborah, do you, do you warm to the notion of vision? Does it seem appropriate uh, language for use in church? Is it uh, uh, over grand or is it uh, something that you think is really a helpful kind of thinking? I think it's really helpful. I think it, without some sense of what the future direction might be or what might be awaiting us, we can quickly fall into just maintaining our buildings and keeping going. And I, I think that God's plans and purposes unfolded in scripture are much bigger than just surviving and if we're not careful uh, we can fall into survival mode and I think particularly in lockdown it's a real challenge in smaller churches to see beyond the immediate and so some sense of vision 
um, however small, is really important um, to, uh, to keep us going, but also to give us a purpose and a direction. Sometimes people ask me, <clears throat> what's your vision for such and such a thing? And I, I feel uh, partly a bit pretty poor to say, well, I haven't got one. That doesn't sound really terribly uh, exciting or encouraging. But also I'm conscious that vision isn't really just about what I might think or discern or, or perceive, but it's, it's a common uh, task, isn't it? Andrea, how do we help people uh, form a, a shared vision? Well, absolutely. It's, it's something that's, that's overarching. So it's something that needs consultation, needs conversation. It needs prayer and spending time with one another. Um, you know, lots of us will have brilliant ideas in isolation, but unless they can coalesce into something practical that can become strategy, then they're, they're just lovely ideas that you have over your breakfast coffee. Um, it, it needs to have that sort of commonality, that collegiality, and the drive to go with it. And, and Jim, how have you, in your own situation, worked on creating a vision for your for your church, for example? Um, well, I think the key thing is to understand the common purpose of the church in the context wherever you are, uh, and whether it's a, a, a big church or multiple church benefits or anything like that. Um, my strategy has always been very much uh, based on the preparation stage where we pray and we observe and we perhaps audit where we are, uh, seeing what God has done in the past and the way God is working at the, at the time. Uh, and then it's a matter of bringing a team together because as we've heard, it isn't just a single uh, vision of one person for the church. It's got to be far more than that. It's got to be owned by the people of God, the church. Uh, and then I think once you've actually got a, an idea of the purpose of the church in the context, it's working out how we can uh, best fulfill that purpose together. And that purpose will be very strongly linked, as Lindsay said, to, to God's kingdom and also God's kingdom values and how we can serve uh, those best in our area. So in a sense, uh, vision is something that's given to us, uh, but it's also something we need to seek and discern. It's that kind of partnership, isn't it? The, the vision of the kingdom is there, but how we... Uh, flesh that out in our own particular circumstances and context is part of the process of discernment. And it seems to me there are perhaps significant overlaps between notions of seeking a vision and our vocation. I mean, turn to you, Lindsay, on that one. I mean, there, there's a vocational element, isn't there? It, not a corporate vocation as well as a individual personal vocation in, in kind of seeking that vision. Yeah, absolutely. I think in vision and in vocation, you're not only asking God what you are called to be, you're sort of letting go of the things you're not called to be. Um, and too often, I think the vision for the church is that everything that's good, we must do it. <laughs> we must be involved in all the kind of positive stuff. Um, and actually, that that's never going to be the vision for the church. We have a very distinctive call, and it's how we discern what that looks like in each context, in each place, and um, for each different community, and together, that is that really kind of exciting um, vision seeking, I think. Absolutely. It can be difficult sometimes to form that common vision, that sort of vocational sense at a, at a parish level. So how on earth do we do that at a, a, a larger level? We talk, we have a diocesan vision statement and prayer. Um, and of course, with shaping for mission, we're looking at visions uh, created as a process of, of deanery reflection. So Deborah, I wonder whether you uh, have any thoughts on how you, you kind of manage to get such diverse people to agree uh, on anything close to a common vision. Well, fortunately, some of that's not really my, my, uh, my remit in a way, but I do think um, that when, you're, when we're looking at vision, we're also needing to look a little bit about the vocation of the individuals who are going to be part of that vision. Um, and I think that that works in parish as well as on a deanery level. So what do some of the individuals feel called and gifted to do, to offer? What's in their heart? What will people be willing to give time to? Um, so certainly in my deanery, one of the key things that's coming up at the moment is around um, church schools. So we've got 12 church schools in our deanery and we're looking at what might that mean for us as a deanery and how we can equip some of our lay people maybe to be involved in that ministry um, and we seem to be blessed as well with a number of people 
who have had careers in education. So there seems to be emerging some sort of um, synergy, another business word really, between uh, the things that we've got to do, the people that we've got who might be able to help us and where their heart is and um, the things that they would want to do um, for church and for mission. I think it's pretty helpful to just remind us that vision isn't some kind of ethereal airy fairy something up in the air, but actually has to has to work out in, in practical details with the resources that God has given us uh, and, and the people that God has given us and their gifts and talents and abilities. Andrew, um, I don't know if you're involved with um, uh, working cross deanery, but certainly you've got more than one church to look after. Uh, how, how have you managed to kind of bring people together across with it? potentially the diversity of views and so on. Well, fortunately, all three of our churches are quite similar. But I mean, one of the one of the great issues that we've had, like everybody else over the last 18 months, has been COVID and pandemic. And actually, the team ministry formed in the middle of all of that. And so trying to bring people together when they can't actually be together is, is quite difficult. Um, but I think it has also given us that space to reflect audit again I suppose if you want to use that sort of business term but to reflect on where we are and what is working what isn't working where we want to be and because we haven't been able to do the things we might normally do we, we're actually able to think a bit more and it's it's resulted in all sorts of other fresh things that we're trying out and you know, that that does bring people together because you get this shared sense of excitement that we're doing something new so there's new growth that's exciting um and it's just because it's been forced upon us by a very different reason than the shape and commission has come about but other circumstances have forced it so it's great yeah so there are even opportunities for vision sharing in a time of pandemic it just has to be done differently um, and, yeah. and that's part of our responding to the times isn't it because actually our vision will inevitably be different to what we're shaped by the circumstances as we find ourselves in, not least, uh, pandemic. So, uh, well, thank you very much uh, for your contribution. I, I can tell you that next week's uh, ministry shift uh, will be happening on St. Chad's Day. And so we're going to be thinking about saints and their place uh, in the life of the contemporary church as we uh, celebrate the lives of those who have gone before us. Thank you to Deborah and to Lindsay, to Jim and to Andrew and to you for watching. Bye-bye.